Hello everybody, uh, this is Marius again and uh, together with Nikos we have a second uh, case of the week. Uh, today we have a fistula that we're going to present you and the treatment of this fistula obviously. Uh, Nikos. So we had this interesting case of an 8 year old patient that presented to us with stroke symptoms and during the workup we found out about this um, arteriovenous malformation. Well, I think it's a very interesting incidental finding, right? Um, maybe we could have missed this on the initial CTA, uh, but obviously our colleagues found it and uh, then we brought the patient to the angio room and did a diagnostic angiography where we could see this uh, really interesting, I would say, fistula. Uh, as you can see, it arises from uh, vessels of the external carotid artery, uh, from the occipital branches here, and also has some um, feeders from the um, meningeal, uh, medial meningeal artery. Um, and uh, I found really interesting first uh, this uh, type of fistula. Uh, obviously it's a high-grade fistula and uh, the risk of bleeding is uh, pretty high. So uh, even if the patient is a little bit older, we decided to treat him um, sooner than later. Uh, but also the way we treated this patient was really interesting in my point of view, so this is why we present it to you. Uh, could you just give us a bit of an insight on the relevant anatomy, the vessels and the structures maybe on the area? Yes, of course. I mean, uh, here, uh, if I can show you the zoom, uh, you can see the catheter is uh, in the external carotid artery. So in this uh, angiogram, we can see the occipital artery here. Uh, and of course here, the stylomastoidal branch that uh, primary feeds this uh, um, this uh, fistula here, uh, but also you can see that uh, there is uh, branches or there are branches from the um, parietal uh, branches of the uh, middle meningeal artery that go all the way to the fistula and uh, it's not so um, prominent this vessel but obviously there is a connection to the connecting vessel and then to the um, dilated cortical Vein, which obviously has the increased bleeding risk here. Uh, but also if we uh, unzoom a little bit, you can see that uh, this arterialized vein also uh, brings uh, high pressure blood to this other cortical veins here. Uh, and then you can see that uh, obviously here you have a looping of uh, the vein of Labe uh, that then leads uh, blood back to the sinus, to the transverse and uh, sigmoid sinus. So again, if you see this as a video from the initial stages of this fistula to the later phases, it's really interesting to see this loop here going back to the sinus. What's the plan? I mean, how would someone treat optimally this uh, arteriovenous fistula? Well, obviously, I mean, there are a lot of ways of uh, going to Rome and uh, um, there are a lot of ways of treating this fistula. Uh, I mean, we, one could operate on this and uh, try to surgically find this vessel and, um, and occlude it. Uh, we opted for a balloon augmented pressure cooker technique. Uh, as you know, this is something that uh, we really like and do uh, a lot of times uh, for fistulas here in Basel. Uh, so, um, we place a balloon in one of the feeders, inflate the balloon, and then through this dual lumen balloon, usually we use the scepter or scepter mini, uh, we can then inject uh, liquid embolics, like for example, onyx in this case, and then uh, be able to um, occlude the fistula and the collecting vessel, uh, and then obviously the uh, proximal part of this vein. Now the interesting point is to actually decide from which vessel you're gonna start and if I ask you now I mean where would you go probably to start injecting liquid embolics? I mean the naive thought that everyone has is go maybe to the biggest vessel but I think that's the trap right? Yes I mean that's the trap and you <laughs> recognized it nicely so where would you go then? Uh, the second vessel I see in mind maybe is go to that MMA parietal uh, branch. It's very small, but it goes directly to the fistal point. Yeah. That's exactly what we did and that's what we uh, usually try to do. Take the smaller vessel. You can see here we have placed a scepter mini uh, as distal as we could uh, in this uh, MMA branch. And here we have a second scepter in the occipital artery. Any ideas why we use this second one in the occipital artery? 
I mean, they both feed blood into the same fistle point mm -hmm. and you want to inject onyx from like the upper part to the lower part to the fistle point. So maybe you want to just, I don't know, manipulate the flow. Yes, that's way. exactly the point. Uh, it's all about hemodynamics, right? If you start injecting here and you have a lot of flow coming from the other vessel, then your liquid embolic is not going to fill all the feeders that come from uh, this uh, uh, other vessel, right? And the idea was we inflate here the scepter, as you can see here, it's inflated. And then we start injecting from here and maybe we're able to occlude the whole fistula. Usually we are pretty uh, able to do that. So if we continue a little bit in time, then you can see here, this is the first cast. Uh, and you can see that we have a nice dissemination of the liquid embolic in the collecting vessel in the proximal part of the uh, vein. Uh, but as we continue and we inject a little bit more, you can see now here, this is the final um, angiogram. Obviously, when we deflate the scepter, you can see the fistula is now treated. Uh, but you can also nicely see here that we have a really nice dissemination of liquid embolic in all the feeders around the collecting vessel. And then obviously we have also occluded the proximal part of this dilated cortical vein. I mean, when you hear about uh, fistula embolizations, a lot of people say, be careful of them and beware of the fascial arcade. Is that something relevant that you had in mind while planning the intervention? Of course, uh, we always uh, are aware of the fascial arcade and we try to uh, use our liquid embolics as uh, far away as uh, possible. Uh, but as you can see here, if you check the native image, we are actually far away from the uh, facial canal here. Uh, and uh, thus, this is not dangerous uh, in this case. Uh, if I unzoom a little bit, you can kind of see the fascial arcade here. In this case, it's not so prominent as in other cases, uh, but uh, nevertheless, um, we are far away and this is something that you have to keep in mind. Uh, here is the inner uh, ear and obviously you await that the facial canal and a nerve, uh, they um, uh, go along this way. So if you have a fistula that's near to this position, then you have to be aware about the possible complications. So, I mean, technically it seems very nice. And how was the patient clinically after that? I mean, it was a great uh, treatment. If you check the wrist to uh, end of embolization time, it was around uh, 25 minutes. Uh, so altogether really fast treatment for this uh, case. So prior to that, the patient had some tinnitus uh, and uh, this resolved after the treatment. Uh, but uh, as you know, from aneurysms and from, you know, some fistulas, uh, patients don't really have any or significant symptoms uh, in most of the times from uh, the vessel malformations. Uh, so what we were able to do is reduce or uh, minimize uh, the bleeding risk actually. And again, this is the final image. You can see nicely here that uh, the fistula is actually gone. Uh, we have also some MRIs after a couple of days where we saw that this uh, cortical arterialized vein uh, occluded. Uh, so maybe this is also another important uh, take-home message. Uh, we keep those patients on uh, heparin for two days, then we do an MRI scan, uh, and then we actually decide if we're going to continue or no uh, regarding the um, thrombosis of uh, such a big vein. So, Marius, is there any value in doing any 3D reconstructions for the planning of the intervention? Definitely. Uh, we really like to do 3D reconstructions and especially now with the Icono, the quality of the 3D is even better. So you can see all the smaller vessels and you can nicely see also the collecting vessel here that you actually want to, uh, to occlude. Uh, and uh, you can also see here the uh, meningeal artery coming all the way and the branch coming all the way and feeding uh, the fistula. One other thing that you can do is also you can uh, check here the native uh, fill uh, reconstruction. Uh, and then you can actually, as in a CT and geography, be able to see here where exactly is the uh, collecting vessel, uh, where the vein starts. And this is the part of the fistula that we want to occlude, right? Uh, so for planning purposes, I really like uh, the rotational and geography. So is there something in this case that you would do differently now? To be honest, not really. I mean, um, this was, um, this went as planned. 
Uh, it was a really nice case um, altogether. We had a good ra radial axis uh, positioning uh, with our uh, wrist uh, catheter, which we use a lot uh, for radial uh, procedures. Uh, we place a short seven French radial sheet and then uh, we go with our, our wrist all the way to the vessels that we want to um, treat. Uh, and again, as you can see in this case, uh, we actually had a really good uh, result uh, in a really short time. Uh, so for me, this is uh, what makes uh, this kind of treatment so unique, uh, that you can actually be really fast with your treatment, so you minimize the complications for the patient. After seeing this awesome case, what are the take-home messages from your side? So I would say first take home message is that uh, the arterial uh, way uh, doing a balloon augmented pressure cooker technique uh, can be really helpful for treating those patients. Uh, then I would always go for the smaller vessel first, so the uh, so-called miraculous MMA branches, uh, and then you can treat uh, the vessel malformation from there. Uh, and uh, yeah, keep in mind that uh, extensive thrombosis can happen. Uh, so usually we give uh, heparin uh, and we follow up the patients after a couple of days on MRI to be sure that, you know, we don't have any complications. Thank you so much. We will put the setup in the description and stay, stay tuned for more. Yeah, thank you so much for uh, watching this video. Uh, as always, uh, we would like to have your uh, comments and uh, your uh, questions and we will answer it uh, shortly. Uh, if you want to check our video on uh, the preparation of a Scepter mini balloon, uh, then you can click uh, on the uh, description or on the banner uh, above and you can see the preparation. Thank you.